Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. So today it's back with the black BMW 6D, the 530i with the M52 engine. And today we're gonna start taking apart the cooling system. Now in today's video, I think we're just gonna replace the coolant reservoir um, and the coolant flange at the top. And then the rest of it will go on to another video. And the reason I'm breaking this down in bits is for many of you guys who asked me to actually break it down so you don't miss anything and also so you can see it on different videos. And this is the reason we're gonna break it down, do it bit by bit to get this car fully restored so you guys don't miss anything and also you can take it all in or what's being done and you don't miss a certain thing that I'm actually doing on this car. So let's get onto the video and start flushing and draining the cooling system on this car so we can start renewing all the parts. God damn, get it done with you. When the blow up now, everybody's so unusual with it. Shit. But said times in his rhymes because his memories. We run into New York, so you know. Okay, guys, so the first two things we're going to be doing today is this, which is the coolant reservoir. As many of you guys know, the dipstick is broken. So when you go to take the lid off, you can see that there's no dipstick. Now the coolant is full, it's just the dipstick's broken, so you can't actually see, you know, how much coolant is actually in it. Now, I know to some people that don't matter. It still works, no cracking it, no nothing like that. It's just the dipstick's broken. Obviously it become brittle and just cracked. So I'm gonna be replacing it for a new one. It just looks very like untidy. So that's one of the reasons why I'm gonna be putting a new one on. We'll leave the lid undone because we're gonna be draining the coolant. But I'm also gonna be focusing on this part right down here, which is the coolant flange as well. We're gonna do these two. Now a lot of you are gonna ask me why I'm not doing the water pump thermostat. If you remember in one of the previous videos when I actually spoke before I started getting on with this car, I did say to many of you that this water pump actually only been changed in 2014. Now I'm still on the side if I'm gonna change it or not change it. And if I do go to change it, I don't have to really worry because I'm not gonna be putting new, new coolant in this car at all. Um, not until the car is fully finished. And that will be the same for the oil as well. I don't plan on doing any, um, putting no fluids in it to sit there while we're still you know, doing with the car because there's a lot to do on it. And obviously I want it to all be fresh when it first fires up and starts up. So let's get on to going underneath the car, drain the coolant, I'll get it up on the lift, show you guys how to drain it. You would have seen me do it on the six series. Six series didn't have as much coolant because it already had a coolant leak from the lower radiator hose. But this one is holding a load of coolant, so I expect a flood in here. Okay guys, so if you can see up here, this is the little hose we're gonna be removing to drain the coolant on these. Now if you can see, these don't have a bleed screw that you just turn and unloosen and let the coolant drain out. You have to take off this little hose right here and we're going to disconnect that and i've got my pan ready to catch the coolant i may have to clip it back on if it ends up overflowing on my coolant drain pan um because i ain't sure the the pan is going to be enough to catch all the coolant here because this is a nine liter um can but who knows it might be enough to catch it all so we're going to disconnect it now we're just going to use a little pick here i'm just going to pull that out just like that what I'm going to do is hold the pan up here and just try and pull the hose and then it will come out. You can see, bang there, going into here. Try and keep it out of your face, guys. And if you do do this on the floor, just be careful. Make sure you wear goggles um, because how fast it can throw out. And I think that's about it. We'll just put this down and let it keep draining. Just there, you can see it literally draining out. And the coolant doesn't look too good actually. Um, it's quite dirty and it's red. But bear in mind this coolant's been sitting for a very, very long time. So we'll just let that finish draining out of there. There is quite a lot. And I have got the lid off on the expansion tank as well. And that's what you need to do to let it completely come out. Um, don't have no pressure up there. Um, release the lid first. So then that way it just flows out nicely like it just did there. I'm very surprised it didn't go over my floor. But it surely can't be all the whole system drained. Um, so we will have to look up draining it from the lower radiator hose as well. Just to be sure. I'll probably just give that a push. Right, I'm up here. Okay. 
it seems like it's emptied. So that's good. Usually when you press the lower radiator hose on, which goes to the thermostat and lower radiator, um, you can feel cooling in there and it will splurt out everywhere. But it didn't, so that's a good thing. Now what we'll do is just put this locking clip back up and <coughs> lock that back in. Now we've got the coolant out of the car. We'll move to the top and take off the expansion tank. Okay guys, so can I just say, what a relief and what I hope it is actually having a car lift because doing that on the floor, flushing coolant, changing any kind of fluid must be a pain in the bum for a lot of people. And it must be a lot of agony for people to do it on the floor as well, having it go in your face and eyes, not knowing where to get rid of it. So thank the Lord I'm lucky enough to have a lift and be able to go underneath and do it just like that. Be able to drain it straight into a pan. You know, I didn't get wet, my floor didn't get wet, no nothing, it was very easy. Now, I'm just gonna make sure this is completely empty before we take it off, which is the coolant reservoir is now empty. So now that means we can get onto removing it. So now to remove it, we're just gonna remove this locking um, hose just right here. Take that off the reservoir, take that one out, leave that one here to hang. Then you've got one at the bottom just down here, which I think just pulls up just like this, which it does, just pull that up. Just like that. And what we'll do is remove these, I believe, Torx 25 bolts that hold the coolant reservoir onto the chassis. So these are Torx 25 bolts, guys, you're gonna have to release. Remember to keep them safe because these will hold down your coolant reservoir. And then underneath, you've got your coolant sensor, coolant level sensor. You're gonna have to disconnect that as well, which I'll show you in a sec. And just like that, it's out. Like I said, this lower pipe, which is the one you saw me drain, which goes to the lower radiator and up to here to the coolant reservoir. It can be a bit stiff from all the years of being on there, but we got it off. Do remember to take your blank off as well. We've got to take that off and put that on our new one. All right, guys, so this is our new coolant reservoir. This is a Febby one that I paid, I think, £50 for. It doesn't come with anything you need. So, for instance, your blank, you need to take your old one off and clip it back on. And your other hoses, obviously, as you can see, this one isn't badly corroded. You've got a new coolant level sensor inside here as well. So you don't need to worry about taking out your old one, but of course you can, if obviously you trust that. And obviously that's your centering point to align it to sit on the chassis leg itself. That's the box that come in. So it was a Febby one that I actually purchased. And now what we're gonna go ahead and do is reinstall this. Do remember you need to keep your cap as well because it doesn't come with a new cap. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna clip in our coolant level sensor to start with. And it clips straight in. Bearing in mind this is a Febby part, so I expect all parts to just go straight in without a fuss. Then we've got our lower hose, which clips straight in again. Then we need our top hose is somewhere around here which we'll just clip in here and all we'll do is just screw it back down then we'll tighten the bolts back down now we'll tighten the bolts back down and now all we need to do is just put our new lid on and that's the job done now i'll tell you one thing this reservoir doesn't feel as flimsy as my other one did because the lid was quite tight wouldn't go on i think all them years of being on it just was time for a change and now it's been changed so if yours is overdue, you now know how simple it is to actually change the coolant reservoir. Now it's been changed, let's move on to the coolant flange. Okay guys, so as you can see here, we've got this coolant flange. And if you remember from the six series, I had a lot more room to actually work on to bring this out. But on the five series, there isn't that much room as there is on the six series, which is to be expected. Now we could have take off this front slam panel and um, take it out of the way to give us that extra little bit of room, but it's really not gonna matter. I'm gonna do it just like this, like many of us do. Um, we're going to have to remove this coolant pressure switch first and take it out of the way and then we're going to have to get our 10mm socket and try and remove them 10mm bolts out of there and then take the coolant flange off and then we'll have to sort out cutting it off. So what we'll do, we'll just crack the nuts loose, the 10mm nuts. Now last time you would have seen me use my electric ratchet but there's really no need, you don't need to have all these kind of tools just to do this and these bolts really ain't on that tight. They're about the same torque as your solenoid bolts. They're really not that much torque on them at all. Um, obviously the hardest thing is to catch the bolts as they come out. And obviously you're gonna to wanna to use some kind of pry tool to obviously remove um, 
the flange out of the housing itself from the seal because it would have just corroded in there over time. Now, my best bit of advice here is to make sure you have your under tray off. And the reason for that is if any of these bolts drop, you'll, they'll just drop to the floor instead of on the under tray and you'll be able to find them straight away because they are quite small. And I always say the same thing about the solenoid bolts as well. So now we've got the bolts out. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is just use a pry tool to slightly maneuver this out the way. You can see here, it does want to budge, but not that much. And just like that, that one's out. Now we've got to try and figure out a way of bringing the hose up, which we're going to have to do. I'm just going to release it from the hose. Okay guys, so now I've got that out. If you can see here, this one is quite badly perished. You can see there, it's all rusted. It's actually broken um, all round. So this one is really, really bad. And this one needs to be changed. I don't know how this hasn't exploded. because you can see here, this is all literally broken down um, completely all on the corners as well. There's no actual flange at all. And you'll see here, here's the other piece that was actually in the housing itself. It's actually broke off. It's all corroded. This needs changing. At 170,000 miles, I think it's done absolutely brilliantly. Um, and this is why I suppose you guys say to actually change it because of this reason, but on 170K, it's done really well and to not fail me. But as you can see, that was cracked and this could have been causing a massive coolant leak for that all being cracked as well. So I'm glad I actually done this. So now what we're gonna go ahead and do is just cut this off because we need to get that off. So I'm gonna be using my air grinder just to cut through, um, obviously the metal clip, which is non serviceable. So you can see here now, it's now been cut off and I'm just gonna break it all free. Break the clip off and take it off completely. So I'm gonna take this whole clip off. And we can see the coolant flange has gone missing. So that's the old coolant flange. And this one was cracked, deteriorated very, very bad. And I'm glad I got that one off. If you can see here, I didn't actually cut through the hose. So we are able to put the hose back on properly. You can see there it's got a line obviously from the clip, but it didn't actually cut through the hose itself. So that's quite good actually, especially using a grinder. Um, but yes, this was way overdue and I'm glad I got it off guys, cause as you see, it was cracked, badly cracked. So here it is, here's the new aluminum one we're just gonna be putting on. We'll just stick the hose in there and we'll just find its housing and just pull it back into place, just like that. Just put our 10 mil bolts back in. And just like that, and we'll just tighten them up and then what we'll do is put the Jubilee clip on. Now that's on, now we'll just put our Jubilee clip on and put the hose in place. And that's the new coolant flange on the car, guys. And as I said, it's very, very lucky. I did replace it. And if many of you guys haven't checked yours, go and check your coolant flange. This does apply for the M52, M53, M54, and the M55. Okay, guys, so as you've seen there, I've now replaced the coolant reservoir on this BMW 60 and also the coolant flange. As I said, that is just a very small amount of things I've only done to this car. There is still a lot of stuff to do on this car. As I said to you, I'm still in negotiations regarding the water pump thermostat. As I said, I do have it there already on the bench, but I don't know if I wanna put it on this car or the six series. I need to work out what I'm gonna do. Gotta bear in mind, this car is gonna be sitting once it's done. It's not gonna be used again. It's not going on the road again. The water pump is still fine at present. So I don't know if to change it or not change it. I'm like I said, I'm just in two minds, but the six series I am gonna be using. So if that one is old and has been on the car from um, 2006, I will change that one because I know this one was changed to 2014. But that isn't the only parts we've got to change. We still got to change the lower radiator hose pipe. We've still got to change a lot of other pipes. We've still got to do a gearbox fluid change. We have got so much to do on this car on top of the LCI conversion, a lot of other stuff, changing the oil, flushing the engine, doing the oil for the coiler gasket, the oil for the housing gasket. So much stuff still to go until I get this car to be top, top condition. And we've still got to do all the brakes. I've still got to tighten all the control arms. 
So much work to go, guys, but it will be coming up on other videos. As you're seeing, we're already working on this car and we're getting things done. We're getting the ball rolling with this car. I'm excited as you are to get this car back up to scratch and to get it back running and I cannot wait to get it running after sitting for nearly a year. It is time to get this baby back on the move. So thank you very much for watching guys. It's BMW Dr. Dean and I hope this video will help many of you change your coolant reservoir as it does apply to all the BMW 60s. And obviously the coolant flange does apply to M52, M53 and M54 and M55. Thank you very much for watching. It's BMW Dr. Dean here and goodbye.